What's going on everybody? It's Mike from Patriot Considerations here. Today I'm going to be going over the PID HC, the High Candela model. This is the only one in the PID lineup from Holosun that they recently launched that I was really interested in. The other one being a thousand lumens and around 22,000 candela. Uh, this one being 800 lumens, but it's 42,000 candela, so it's just going to have a lot more throw and a little bit tighter hotspot. I really do like this light. I do think that it is a good option and it is really driving competitors into a higher place in the market. I will be showing you um, a little bit more about it. I'm going to be showing some different B-roll and videos of comparisons between the X300 from X300U from Surefire as well as the TLR7A, which is a very popular concealed carry light that I hope a lot more people switch to something along this lines um, simply because the horsepower difference between the two different lights. I hope you enjoy the video. Please stick around. And if you thought it was useful, go ahead and consider subscribing. It does help me out a little bit. It gives me a little bit of encouragement to make more videos kind of like this one. Thanks. Today I'm reviewing the Holson PID High Candela. So in the box, you get the light itself, an included 18350 rechargeable battery that is removable via the light head. Inside the light body, you will find two springs, you'll find one on the light head and then one on the body itself. And this helps reduce shock on the uh, battery itself, hopefully increasing life as well as trying to ensure that it does not flicker at all under recoil. You also get the included magnetic recharging cable. So you, if you have the light on the gun and you don't want to remove the light head and take the battery out, say it's on a nightstand or whatever, and you just want to throw it on the charger at night sometime, uh, you can just clip that on there and uh, charge the battery up without removing it. Uh, I prefer to, you know, swap the cells out uh, quickly, but just being able to top this, the thing off, you know, on your nightstand or whatever is actually a great idea. I did check uh, on the pins on the light body itself, and they are not um, live all the time. There is a diode in there to keep them from, uh, from coming live. There's some kind of circuitry to protect it so you don't accidentally blow the battery up or short and uh, cause a fire or something. So I, I stuck a screwdriver on there and uh, it is protected. The switches themselves are inward paddle switches. They are made out of metal. They are similar to the Enforce style um, inward pressure switches. Unlike the Surefire switches that go down or up or press inward, um, these press in towards the trigger guard. Fastening method just goes on the bottom just like that. You have three different keys that are included in the box for different brands of lights. The number one key that is in here came on here and it is the one that works on Glocks perfectly out of the box. So use your Holosun tool. You can also use a flathead screwdriver. Um, unfortunately, unlike other lights on the market such as the Surefire X300UB, I don't have one, the Streamlight TLR7A or the TLR1HL, those all have the provisioning to use a 9mm casing to, uh, to crack that screw loose. Unfortunately, this one, you probably won't be able to do that. It's too thin. Um, but any flathead screwdriver or, or you know knife blade or whatever in a pinch will work. Uh, but realistically, you're probably not ever going to have to remove this unless it's in an admin setting, so it's not a huge deal to me. Um, the light body itself, the light itself is actually very heavy compared to other lights on the market. TLR 1HL, unfortunately I don't have one with me right now, but I have the X300, uh, which is very similar in weight to the 1HL. This one weighs uh, a good portion more. I did not put them on a scale, but I would say I'm in the neighborhood of probably about 20% more. Um, not a huge deal breaker to me, um, just something to take note. Uh, the light body itself is very stout. It is made out of T6775 aluminum, as the uh, documentation says. Um, very durable. Uh, I don't have any qualms with the actual build quality itself. Back to the switches again real quick. Uh, to press them in, you have two different modes. You can press and hold for momentary on and then release and it'll come off. Or you can just click the switch and it will go to constant on. Unfortunately, the way they implemented the constant on feature, I think it has a negligent discharge feature built into it uh, to where if you click it too quickly, it will not, as see if you can hear here, it will not actually come on if you click it too quickly. I want to say it's probably around a tenth or fifteenth of a second. Um, if you do it too quick, 
it's uh, it's not going to work. But if you just, you know, give it a little click, just, you know, deliberately enough, it will come on constant on every single time. That is the method I prefer with this. Unfortunately, due to the inward uh, pressure that you have to supply to the light to do momentary on, as well as the angle of the switches, uh, the momentary on feature just doesn't work for me because I feel like my grip is too compromised and I'm not going to be able to control recoil very well. Uh, so with that being said, constant on feature, not a huge deal. I usually run my lights that way anyways, just so I can get the proper, you know, thumbs forward grip that I like shooting with so much. The output itself, as you can see in multiple different videos, is actually quite what I would say quite decent. The color temperature, some people did complain I have seen online about it being a little bit too cool for their liking, uh, saying it would distort colors. Me personally, I don't find that to be an issue. I don't really need a uh, picture perfect colors. What I need is contrast and this does provide a good level of contrast. What you're trying to contrast is, you know, the, the frame of a gun or the outline of a firearm of some sort against the background. And I think this light does that quite superbly. It has a very tight hotspot. Uh, on the high candela model here uh, with usable spill i will say that the spill could be a little bit better i can i understand you can only have the you know one or the other for the most part you can't have the best of both worlds you can't have you know x300 ultra flood as seen in some of these videos here as well as that super tight hot spot it's just honestly with the size of the light head and the geometry there's only so much you can get away with because of physics so uh, with that being said, the light itself does offer ample throw as well as ample spill. The candela, uh, from what I see here, I would say is probably slightly underrated. I think that this thing is probably pushing out a little bit more than 42,000. Obviously, that's a very subjective thing. But from my experience using X300 turbos and other lights, I believe this is probably more than 42,000 candela. I would say in this scene, because of the lighting, the cooler color temperature of the Holosun light actually was favored um, to your naked eye and to the camera um, over the MCH from Cloud Defensive. The Cloud Defensive light is rated at 1200 lumens and 50, I believe it's 52,000 or 55,000 candela. Um, so the fact that that light got outperformed by an 800 lumen light from Holosun actually kind of surprised me. So for the Halston light, there's two different types of modes. You have low mode and high mode. High mode, 800 lumens, 42,000 candela. The other one, low mode, is exactly half of that. In order to change them, you just press and hold for one second, and it will cycle through them, and you just stop on the one you want it to go on. So just press and hold, high mode. All right. Honestly, I prefer to just leave it in high mode all the time. I think switching from high mode to low mode is just dumb. Uh, thankfully, it's in a method to um, run it on here to switch it. You're not likely to inadvertently switch it to low mode. I will say, even though it is in low mode, 23,000 candela with 400 lumens, it actually is a quite usable light uh, due to the amount of horsepower that it's just got behind it. So it seems to run pretty well. Um, I have not shot with it yet. Unfortunately, I haven't got to the range yet. I will be doing um, some night fire here hopefully soon with it. And I will report back. Obviously, this is just an unboxing and initial review. Um, I will be running this light probably through at least another two or 3,000 rounds before I get a chance to make another video on it as a follow-up. The dimensions themselves, they come in around right in between the TLR-1HL, the X300, and the TLR-7A. It falls in a happy medium. It is around the same critical dimensions of the TLR-1HL. The 1HL has a light bezel that is the same as this light here, uh, and it is ever so slightly larger than the X300 Ultra's light bezel. I will say, though, the X300 Ultra is significantly longer, which will impede on comfortable concealed carry, especially if you're running, like, appendix uh, inside the waistband. Um, so if you are carrying this light, this will probably be one of the more powerful, more compact options on the market as we speak. So the 1HL is significantly, or slightly anyways, I should say, wider because they will be using dual batteries parallel to each other uh, as opposed to this using a single 18350 battery. Real quick, I just wanted to touch on holster compatibility. So I tried it with a couple different holsters. I only use the X300 um, 
currently. So I had a Alien Gear Rapid Force level 3 holster, and with the Hellison PID, it locks in both level 2 and level 3. Um, everything just fits just fine. You just had to adjust the tension screw a little bit. I also use a Filster Floodlight uh, for an X300. I didn't have one for TLR1HL on hand, but I imagine it will work fine. Uh, both of them used uh, very similar lockup. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. Let me know what I did wrong, and I'll try to make it better for the next time. Thanks, we'll see you later.